good afternoon all of you i am vandana agrawal i'll be teaching you this course on machine learning i hope all of you are able to hear me so in case of any difficulties you can uh, check the system at your side and if there is any major problem please inform me through the chat yeah so uh, let us start so all of you have already heard of the potential of machine learning in different uh, domains of life and it is actually going to help the humans in different ways the humans which are deceased who are deceased and uh, need lot of help and support in terms of the intelligent machines which are able to learn from the different uh, surrounding environment and uh, are able to cope up with the experiences right and respond whenever they are are required to so uh, before uh, getting into the course exactly i would want to discuss the course structure um mainly we will be focusing on basics behind machine learning and uh, we will discuss different machine learning algorithms we will also talk about different machine learning applications um focus will be also on the data visualization evaluation of machine learning models and uh, making predictions multi class classification problems which are the major majority class of problems to be handled through machine learning uh, algorithms we will discuss these uh, we will also talk about function approximation regression problems reinforcement learning artificial neural networks support vector machines and uh, later towards the end of the semester we will be talking about deep learning and convolutionary neural networks fine so i just want to get a feedback uh, whether you are able to uh, hear me see the videos and slides everything is proper fine good so i'm getting a message that everything is uh, properly Uh, received at your end fine so there will be these uh, evaluation components you will have two quizzes each will be of 5% marks and uh, the purpose of the quizzes is to get you to work and uh, uh, start reading the things which are taught uh, remember things and be able to respond to the questions so these are all mostly multiple choice questions which you will have to respond through the online portal of uh, your course page and then there will be an assignment towards the second half of the course work which will be of 10% marks this assignment will be mainly focusing on the uh, python based programming and you will be asked to generate a machine uh, learning model for the given problem and the given data set as far as python learning is concerned it is assumed that python being a very high level language and is mostly preferred by the uh, user community is uh, known to you and it is quite uh, comfortable to learn even and start with python there will be some uh, lectures where i will be also talking about the uh, python constructs uh to make you comfortable with the uh, kind of requirements of your programming so i'll be giving you some practice sheets and some practice code to work with and uh, you will have to honestly work with those practice sheets of course these practice sheets are not going to be evaluative ones but this will give you a, a feel of how to execute your a uh, machine learning programs how to analyze them and then these will prepare the background for your assignment one which will be of 10% marks so your constant learning will help you secure these 10% marks then uh, there will be a mid semester test which will be of 30 marks so the weightage is 30% and uh, the end of uh, the comprehensive exam is of 50% marks so in our uh, system we have mid semester test it is closed book test 
and you are supposed to answer the questions based on your understanding and uh, uh, you know overall learning comprehensive exam will be of 50 percent marks it is going to be uh, open book exam where you will have to uh, have an access uh, uh, to the book the printed material and uh, some written notes uh, the corresponding message will be given to you uh, when the uh, notice for comprehensive examination will be put up what all is allowed and what all is not allowed so they will uh, you will have more challenges to solve problems uh, because you will not be asked uh, questions which are straightforward and uh, direct answers are available in the books so you will have to showcase your uh, problem solving skills mainly in the comprehensive exam of course some basic questions cannot be ruled out here but mostly it will be the problem solving right So, uh, as far as prerequisite uh, for this course is concerned, as one of you was, uh, it is actually the basic statistics uh, which you need to recall and revise. Of course, all of you must have gone through your statistics course once. Um, but the basic mathematics and whatever statistics are required, I think I'll be. Uh, covering in my lectures most of the things and if anything is required for you to look at I will uh, give you the references or I will ask you to do it on your own so right so uh, yeah there are certain um, queries which are coming up uh, regarding the recorded lecture the textbook right so there are no recorded lectures existing previously the purpose of these uh, uh, lectures is to have a uh, you know live interaction with the students and tailor make our uh, you know uh, interactions the lectures based on your need as well so no pre-existing course material is available here and rather it is designed to be you know running in this mode without the previously existing course material so we will have all the discussions here and it will be just like the live lecture the text and reference books are mentioned in the handout the course handout must be accessible to you so you can refer to those texts in uh, reference books but I am planning to uh, revise the handout the course handout which is available online uh, and uh, I will be posting it uh, within this week uh, with the latest topics that I have introduced in this course now right so Python based uh, uh, implementations will also be the part of this uh, course fine so this was a brief uh, discussion on uh, the structure of the uh, lecture so now we are starting with the basic understanding of learning right what is learning so learning for humans it is an experience from past um, whatever we uh, keep seeing in our surroundings whatever we keep uh, listening in our surroundings through our uh, friends voices through our students voices and different other uh, sounds we learn from those we can understand the difference between one person's uh, sound and an, another person's voice here yeah. so then um, you can also differentiate between the persons by looking at their faces so face is also a kind of uh, you know pattern that you are seeing and your brain is processing and you're able to understand who is who by the face if you don't know the person by name then it will be uh, difficult for us to relate the person by name but if we had been practicing such a uh, relation between a face and the name then we know who, who this person is so the similar logic is applied in making systems learn from experience systems experiences through the data so a machine can be programmed to gather experience in the form of facts instances rules etc 
right so this machine with learning capability can predict about the new situation the new situation could have been one of those which you have already seen or the one which you have not ever seen so humans are so good in responding to even unseen situations um a small child may have uh, learned only walking on the road but uh, sometimes uh, the small child can also overcome some kind of obstacle on the road or may uh, may you know save himself or herself from falling on the road so these are all the unseen situations where the child responds even uh, these situations the uh, situations were not seen by the child earlier so a computer which is being trained through machine learning is like a small child we are making a small child who doesn't know the word learn something all of a sudden so some of the situations are being used to tell the machine to know what this is what the real world is about now here you will have to understand the real world that the real world for the machine surrounds only the kind of you know application or the kind of learning that you are expecting from it um, the experiences are you know revolve around that so yeah so this we discussed about these two examples now here in this uh, class experiment i am talking about few uh, data few interpretations we will go one by one assuming that the remaining remaining ones are not seen yet and this is a new pattern which we are seeing for the first time a a denotes 5 let us see this is the kind of encoding we are using let us see the pattern of two bees one following other denotes six and if we are also told that the pattern a a a denotes 5 0 by this time human brain starts learning and this is the way a machine will also start gaining more confidence in its learning right so if suppose it is also told about another pattern about bbb that denotes 60 60 and if there is one more pattern to confirm your understanding that whatever is the number of occurrences of bees it will mean 6 followed by 10 right so it is going to be a n minus 1 digit number where n refers to the number of occurrences of bees similar happens for a so if we are given the fifth training data then our mind understands what this means by uh, having a sequence of some n number of a's so n number of a's would mean 5 followed by n minus 2 zeros a pattern consisting of n b's will denote 6 followed by n minus 2 um zeros so we can very well answer this is the unseen situation we have not been trained with a a a a a but human mind has the generalization ability to understand the pattern and respond in unseen situations so what was seen was these uh, six instances which i mentioned in the uh, bullet points now a a a a a the five occurrences of a was not seen so far still we are able to answer it as 5000 and this answer is correct this is how we say that we have we are able to uh, guess correctly or recognize correctly or predict correctly a pattern which was never seen but we cannot respond anything about the pattern a a b b as we have never been trained for this pattern had there been some occurrences of a b or a a b b Uh, we would have been able to answer it correctly so we should understand that the machine which we are going to program for learning from the environment will learn from the data around it which we call as training data so training data is very very important for the machine so that it can um show that it has learned well and how do we assess the learning capability of a machine it is through the different program different performance measures like uh, sensitivity analysis or 
receiver operating curve or different other kinds of accuracy measurements we understand that my system has learnt this much so 100% accuracy means the system is well equipped with all learning ability and is able to respond well in any seen or unseen situation so this is another example you try to forget that uh, you know these sounds understand the situation when a small child of 2 year old is taught um these phonemes these sounds so as long as the child knows alphabet the sound can be well understood um the child can be told that it is actually this a in between the vowel in between which is making this sound so by training we are giving different instances that is what children learn in their nursery classes so when this is p o t by repeated occurrences of these words the child is capable of recognizing a particular common vowel in uh, these words like p o t c o t the child will understand what is it that is making this sound similarly when it is p a t c a t t a p all are sounding similar so the child will be able to understand the the crux bit behind this sound the crux is that vowel a and this is what we call as feature right so feature extraction is one very important aspect of machine learning we will have to really worry about good features which are discriminative which are informative and are selective so having trained the child with these five patterns of sounds the child will be able to pronounce an unseen instance of not where o is the vowel through which the child recognizes its voice its sound a a it's actually a w so not is pronounced as not because it has been the child has been trained by this uh, sound but the child has not yet been trained with the vowel e in uh, in its presence in the word so check will not be uh, correctly pronounced the child may make some errors we may call it as classification errors if we can consider the sounds as classes different classes then cat pat tap cot pot etc are training data these are classified in different sound classes not is the test data which is considered and um, processed for feature extraction subjected for classification for its classification to one of these sound classes a or o so basically this is a classification problem and children in nursery or uh, lower classes learn to pronounce the words by interactions where teacher is always there to correct them if the teacher doesn't correct then they will never understand that uh, certain things which were pronounced um, wrongly uh, should not be there okay so it is called supervised learning when teacher is there we are training we are uh, understanding that uh, the child is responding properly then we call it supervised classification the similar technique is applied in machine learning where we supervise the a learning mechanism and whenever it is wrongly reported we try to improve the algorithm right so another training example could be understood in this form if a coin is tossed 10 times and it is observed that it fell 7 times with head on top and 3 times tail on top so while you are reading this you are learning what did you learn you are observing that when the the coin was being tossed it fell seven times with head on the top so you know that it is the higher probability to receive a head at the top right so when testing process is uh, repeated or testing process is done and if the query is this will you get head next you will say yes most probably and the probability is computed as 7 by 10 so 0.7 is the probability uh, that you may get it on the top had it been a sequence then you would have actually gone for the posterior probability so 
many things will come up in between and we will talk about different statistical concepts later. So you can also have a query such as this, what is the chance that the next coin when tossed will be head? So your uh, actual objective of this learning would be different, next toss is head. Earlier the hypothesis was get the next, get the head on top. So uh, related to uncertainty handling, you may have a different uh, uh, algorithm. So for learning, for a human, it is gaining experience from day-to-day -day activities and gain ability to predict or ability to respond. We do not keep predicting about our day-to-day -day things, but of course we have that insight in us. If I'm searching for my key bunch, I will, I will look at different objects and still be able to predict that this is my key bunch. Predicting doesn't mean all the time you have to tell. It is like recognizing. So we recognize that and different uh, uh, object classes would be lying on my table. Uh, there is a book which is one object class, there are specs which are another uh, object class. So likewise there will be different types of objects, there could be one key which is lying there but I don't need it but I am recognizing my exact bunch of keys which I want. So those kind of abilities we have and we keep doing it but we do not actually uh, realize that it is something which we had learned and we are now responding to what learning we had earlier. So we have to understand human brain at least to some extent and then we have to generate the programs which will behave like human uh, way of responding things. It is just totally a different uh, uh, insight. Human brain works differently, medical scientists are trying to find out how human brain works. It is not working exactly like an algorithm, it is not working exactly like a if and else condition, it can have a different mechanism medically. So, but uh, when we are training a machine and making it learn, of course it behaves similar to human to some extent, but its algorithms are different, its entire way of doing the things would be different, right? So machine gets trained with the numerical data, the data can be text, image, sound, rules, etc. and they are able to predict. So where should you use machine learning? You cannot use machine learning in every walk of life. You don't want to use, use machine learning for simple calculation of numbers, you don't want to use it in the general computations like payroll or computation of sum of numbers. This is not requiring machine learning. They are straightforward the algorithms. Learning is required when human uh, is not capable of formulating a equation or model or a if, if and else condition. Also machine learning is required in those areas where we cannot send the human. So if there is no human brain around, um, we have to rely on the systems, the automated systems, the autonomous uh, uh, flying robots, they will help in uh, avalanche areas to detect the buried or uh, we can have speech recognition systems in place. Uh, when a navigation in Mars is required, then we don't want to send a human at first. It is only the rovers which are equipped with a lot of machine learning and they are able to move based on the kind of objects uh, they are seeing. Okay, so machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence in which the intelligence system learns from its environment, right? AI systems uh, include intelligence of different types such as reasoning, planning, search and game playing, learning etc. of which learning is specific to machine learning system. Had you been doing a course on artificial intelligence, you would be going through several um, techniques which are capable of creating reasoning skill in the system, the planning skill in the system, the problem solving through search in the system and playing the game on its own. Uh, these kind of skills you would be generating but in machine learning course, you are learning to create learning skill in the 
computers okay so i i guess there are some questions accumulated by now so i will pick up something and then i will move ahead yes so how ai and ml are different so this is the answer uh, yeah i think i have answered your question yeah so should i speak a little louder yeah sai abhishek are you able to hear me now yeah so python will not be taught in the class uh, exactly but we will give you the references and it is actually the all uh, the very high level language it is uh, mostly used in uh, all over the world and it is quite easy to learn or uh, you will have if you have some programming background then you will be able to pick up the language very fast and of course if you have any doubts you can discuss with me right so pattern recognition or face recognition of course they fall in the category of uh, machine learning algorithms so basics of ai are not required pradeep um, you can directly go for machine learning of course when you do a course in ai you you understand actually the behavior of the intelligent agents and uh, you also understand how to create computational intelligence in the systems how to create reasoning how to create planning and different other skills and in ai course we teach in short machine learning which is very small module there but in this course you will be learning all the algorithms pertaining to machine machine learning right so as such we do not in, uh, we do not expect that you should have done ai course beforehand if you have not done it it is not a problem so books as i mentioned they they are there in the handout of course i am going to revise the handout in a week so i will post i'll keep posting some material which you will require for python or anything so uh, that should not be a problem so the prerequisite of this course as asked by pawan uh, the prerequisite is at least some basic understanding of algorithms basic understanding of uh, programming and uh, some mathematical background so all of you are at this uh, professional course Uh, we assume that you have already gone through basic uh, statistics and uh, mathematics, plus uh, the data structure and algorithms, plus you have some programming experience. Okay, fine. So I am uh, uh, keeping these uh, things here, uh, uh, you know, pending for the next uh, discussion. But now I'll go through the uh, lecture. <clears throat> fine so you've understood the difference between artificial intelligence and machine learning so basically if you talk about artificial intelligence there is nothing artificial it is totally computational so artificial intelligence term was coined some 3 to 4 decades ago and today we have understood that it is purely computational intelligence we can create this intelligence to our through our mathematical models and through our programs of course we make them behave and act human like humans respond in few nanoseconds and we are trying to make those systems respond very fast you can understand that the role of algorithms and data structure would be here where we have to understand uh, the importance of real time processing of the large information so being a computer science student you would also be knowing uh, the complexities of time and space of course when you learn artificial intelligence you you understand almost everything right okay so an artificial intelligence system possesses one or more of the human capabilities of reasoning thinking planning learning understanding listening and responding so uh, these are the common attributes of course emotions are also being um attempted to be detected um by the system understand the emotion play the music accordingly 
having uh, attention towards the uh, elderly care uh, capacity for communication so all these are the human attribute uh, and human mind that we try to create these in the computer system of course imagination imagination is also based on some kind of uh, um background some kind of experiences if you have gone through some fairy tales if you have listened to those stories uh, you may have different imaginations but if you have not then your imagination will have the limitation if you have uh, seen some science fiction some science fiction based you know movies then your imagination can go a little ahead you can think of uh, different uh, science fiction write it create it in a movie but if the system has to imagine we have to uh, give it a lot of background experience to be able to imagine how will it think thinking is a general term where thinking can be about reasoning thinking can be about uh, uh, recognizing and so on so it is quite uh, difficult for a uh, for a machine to get trained to learn fully the complete word it is not able to learn the complete word as we humans do we know how to walk we know how to speak we know we are the complete automated uh, system right which uh, which is taking all the decisions on our own right but the machine will have limitation uh, in terms of its data representation in terms of its memory uh, a machine which is good in um, recognizing voices may not be capable of even walking a machine which is capable of walking uh, will not be able to do uh, you know different other tasks a machine which is able to recognize the emotions may not be able to recognize people by face so uh, they are just you know 1000 or 1 millionth part of what we humans are and rather not so efficient but there are always efforts to create uh, perfect machine learning systems which are capable of responding in the given scenarios the scenarios are restricted uh, if they are able to respond 100% in those restricted scenarios then again the research keeps going keeps going it is uh, then demanding more robustness of handling the more robust environment so machine le learning systems can never become complete because then we will have more requirements for its capabilities to handle the rough environment so human brain has different segments of which are responsible for uh, different activities motor area is responsible for responding to the motor abilities and the speech area is responsible for recognition of speech at least this much has been uh, you know identified by the medical scientists and neuro uh, neuro experts um, but the uh, you know underlying mechanism of recognition has not been done so far nobody knows how human brain recognizes things but as far as machine is concerned we have got the inspiration from the human brain we know what human brain does right through its uh, arms and through its uh, through the body's uh, different other uh, organs and we are able to mimic those actions by creating computational intelligence right so thought is a mental activity which allows human beings to make sense of things in the world and to represent and interpret them in ways that are significant so Uh, nowadays um, even people are using brain computer interface where whatever thoughts are coming um in human's mind and especially in the case when there is a, a neuromuscular disorder where the human is not able to move the arms as there is no connect between the brain and the nerves there then through a external device there are attempts to recognize the thought uh, signals and respond accordingly whether it is through the prosthetic arm uh, the kind of actions uh, 
uh, the user is willing to do or the patient is willing to do, we have to go for that. So thoughts also form patterns. These patterns are to be recognized through machine learning. Of course, they are very complex in nature. They reside in a multidimensional space mathematically. And uh, then you have to understand the overall visualization of the data. So memory is the ability to preserve, retain, and subsequently recall knowledge, information, or experience. And then we know that imagination is the activity of generating or evoking novel situations, images, or ideas, etc., in the mind. Now let us discuss a complete intelligent car navigation system. What is there? <laughs> so a system to navigate a car to the airport works on its vision enabled using camera mounted at the front of the car. <clears throat> so you want your car to be intelligent enough to see on the roads, ride it on, on its own. It should have been trained for applying the brakes whenever there are uh, approaching cars from the opposite direction or the car itself is approaching another uh, slow moving car in the front. So of course, it's quite complex. Self-driving uh, cars or automated uh, driving cars, they are very, very difficult to uh, understand the real world situation. The system sees the lane limits. The vehicle vehicles on the way and controls the car from colliding. It has to create a vision capability. This is also the part of machine uh, learning, right? It follows the road directions where it has to understand the rules. So the system learns to handle unforeseen situations where, for example, if the traffic flow is restricted on a portion of the road temporarily, the system takes the alternative path. That means it has learned another alternative path through its past, ex past experiences. Then the system listens to the person sitting in the car to stop at a nearby hotel for tea or it sees around to find a hotel, keeps traveling till it finds one and it stops the car. So this falls in the category of speech recognition and vision. It understands the mood of the person and it starts the music to suit the mood of the person, facial expression. Either it could be facial expression or it could be through the brain waves through which the mood of the person can be detected. Just by looking at the person's uh, face, sometimes it is very difficult to understand the mood of the person. Then brain waves can give uh, more clarity, but it is very difficult to process. So why I'm mentioning the difficulties is because these difficulties pose different challenges in machine learning where you are going to incorporate different variety of algorithms to see that your machine learning system performs well. More challenges exist in the real world. More confined you are to the lab conditions, um, much easier is the algorithm to work for you, 100% correct. The moment you move out of the lab conditions, the real world conditions are very, very different and it is very difficult to cope up with the real world conditions because of the amount of, da amount of data that would be required to be created to train the system. So the difficulty exists. We have to understand that no machine learning system can be 100% correct. So there are always chances that your automated driving uh, car can also collide. Your car may not listen to you or your car may uh, may put a music which really doesn't uh, get appreci appreciation from you. So how far is the Pilani and what is the time? Can I sleep for an hour? Please wake me up. So that means the, your car should be able to talk with you. So that means you need to have natural language processing module also sitting behind. Of course, not just it has to understand your speech, 
which will fall in the category of speech recognition. It also has to process the speech by breaking your uh, words into phonemes, classes, your uh, um, sentences are to be parsed, your sentences are to be understood for their meaning, and then the uh, NLP module will uh, respond to your queries. Your car must say that it is now time to sleep or whether you can or not, like that. It should be able to speak out. So some of the existing intelligence systems are like these. You must have heard of these names. Watson, it is a question answering system where uh, uh, you can pose a question and your machine answers it. And then there was a Deep Blue, a chess program that defeated the world chess champion Gary Kasparov in uh, some few years back. Right, so Deep Blue is a computer. Of course, the human sitting uh, next to it is just, you know, behaving as a actuator for just moving the bots from one place to another. It, these are all based on the instructions given by the Deep Blue computer. Okay. So there are systems uh, which are intelligent, and uh, nowadays people are needing them in their smart homes. The lights switch off if there is no one in the room. Curtains will pull off at the sunrise. Dustbin is emptied before it is over sewing. Small uh, Smart water taps, toilets, etc. Smart office. Automated meeting summary um, is one such need for the smart office. Speaker recognition and summary generation. Automated answering machines. These are all different types of uh, systems that could be made. Um, for uh, life saving, you can have an airplane cocktail, cockpit, which can have the uh, intelligent system that takes automated control when hijacked. So now it doesn't have to listen to anyone and uh, nobody can have the control on that. It actually just listen to the talks between the hijacker and the pilot and now it picked up and uh, had taken the automatic control. So uh, nobody can even um, terrorize the pilot and the uh, pilot will have no control over that. So such systems, uh, if they are existing, nobody will even ever try to hijack it because the, uh, the system will take an intelligent action and uh, save the lives. So medical diagnosis systems trained with expert guidance can uh, diagnose the patient's disease based on the X-ray or MRI images and other symptoms. Um, automated theorem proving is one such very, very complex area where still intelligent machines are not able to perform very good. And just like humans, a general problem solver is not at all existing. One cannot create a machine which has learned almost everything which a adult human knows, where you need to know walking on the road, driving, uh, talking to people, you know, smiling, saying hello to your friends, not saying hello to your uh, enemies, and so many other tricks and kicks which humans know. It is very, very difficult for a machine to know so many things. So, you have understood that uh, these techniques exist. Of course, we are not going to discuss these as they fall in the domain of AI, planning, uh, of course, learning we are going to do in this course. NLP we are not, motion, perception. These are all many different triads where uh, intelligence can be broken. So we are going to talk about in this course the intelligence paradigm of learning. This is just one simple paradigm where so many others we are not focusing on, right? So now we should understand what it means by intelligent agent. An intelligent agent is a system that perceives its environment and takes actions which maximize its chances of success, okay? So it is nothing but a system of hardware and software. Hardware will comprise uh, different actuators like, you know, wheels for a robot or arms for the patient or even some, um, you know, legs which are prosthetic legs for the robot and so on. 
<laughs> so artificial intelligence aims to build intelligent agents or entities okay so an intelligent agent is anything that can be viewed as perceiving its environment through sensors sensors are the basic requirements for any intelligent agent to look at its environment and get acquainted to the environment and be able to respond to it it needs actuators so what is the difference between human agent and machine agent the difference is in the sensor technology they differ in their sensor technology so we humans have ear nose eye touch and smell kind of sensors of course all imbibed in one body um but the machine agent will have a speaker uh, camera infrared sensors smoke sensors and thousands of different sensors exist through which a machine agent you know receives signals from the environment it all depends on the application that you are expecting your machine to solve and uh, respond to you will have to use uh, such sensors for training it certain training can be through some offline data batch processing data but uh, several uh, live systems work on the sensors through which they keep receiving some data and uh, uh, the data gets uh, processed uh, continuously and then the systems respond based on whatever they had learned through different uh, parameters okay so they differ in the capacity to perceive the environment they differ in acting upon the environment through actuators okay so now you have to understand what it means by the environment <coughs> so the parameters that are required for reasoning thinking perception and so on are uh, these these are defining the environment so uh, you know that for a one year old child the environment is home family members toys for a 10 year old child the environment is different it is home family members schools school teachers books playmates and so many other friends uh for a machine maybe a washing machine the intelligent agent environment is not anything else other than some of these uh, essential things the dirt clothes detergent etc it may be the water uh, quality and so many other things the ph values so washing machine will not want the face data to understand whose clothes these are right which it is washing it will be concerned mainly on uh, uh, for these type of uh, values so there it should be having dirt sensor the weight sensor which is weighing the clothes and the amount of detergent and so many things intelligent automobile robot the environment will be different it will only be concerned about the parts of automobile and their uh, exact description likewise every intelligent machine has a different environment to handle which actually forms the data for it okay so how does an intelligent agent work in given environment it perceives the environment through the sensors it acts based on the experience and query it responds in terms of adding to the knowledge base okay and thus it must learn from the history of perceptions okay so the different applications of machine learning are these as we have seen in the previous examples speech recognition automated news summary spam email detection credit card fraud detection face recognition function approximation stock market prediction and analysis etc so uh, we will be looking at some of these things uh, later and before we come to the machine learning definition i will take a small break of 10 minutes uh, so but prior to this i just want to answer a couple of queries uh i am looking at the chat that you have uh, communicated uh so for the books if you join late uh, you can refer 
uh, the handout. Okay. I will be revising the handout that I have mentioned. So some of the other latest topics I will include. Okay. So I'm not getting some questions. So regarding the examination, I think there is sufficient time for us to discuss. So do not worry about the exams right in the beginning. I think you, if you focus on your learning, a uh, lot many things will be comfortable for you in the exam. Okay. So difference between machine learning and AI we discussed. Okay. Machine learning book, yeah, it is available. Tom Michel book you can take or else I think on the Google you can search for it soft copy. It is uh, somewhere lying. I don't know exactly. Okay. <clears throat> Textbooks uh, maybe added some more, but uh, of course, uh, uh, one which is mentioned there will not be removed. Okay. Yeah, live lectures will be sufficient, but of course, some home study uh, will be required. Uh, most of the things that we have uh, to discuss will be covered in these live lectures, as this these uh, lectures are run in the uh, normal mode. Or uh, you will have good opportunity to clarify your doubts as well, right? <clears throat> so emotions are captured through camera mainly. Uh, of course, um, you know, brain computer interface also gives us a way to uh, input uh, the emotions through the um, brain signals, but that is a difficult field uh, right now to handle such uh, emotions. Christopher Bishop's book is a, a costlier one, but I feel that it is still available uh, on Google somewhere as a soft copy. You can try to recover that. So lab sessions will not be there separately. I will give you some worksheets which will not be evaluated, but they are required for your learning. Okay. So the difference between speech recognition and NLP. Uh, is um, vast. Yeah, speech recognition looks at only the speech data and tries to break this speech signal into some essential uh, speech components which are more mathematical, uh, like discrete cosine transform or different other things. But NLP is also uh, uh, there in the background where it parses the meaning of the sentence. It is just not recognizing it. It parses the meaning of the sentence and then uh, corresponds. Um, I'm not getting uh, your question about precision of ML algorithm. So no ML algorithm is 100% correct. Of course, we try to always strive to reach this 100% accuracy. So uh, we will have different types of uh, performance uh, evaluation techniques such as sensitivity analysis, um, you know, accuracy measurements, receiver operating system or uh, things. So yeah, these are there. So Tom Michel, uh, old edition you should not purchase. Yeah, you should always, uh, yeah, that's what I told you that I will try to uh, revise this uh, Handout. If this book has not evolved later, then uh, you will have to rely on whatever is available. I will check it out whether uh, they have uh, come up with a new edition after 97. Yeah. Of course, there are reprints, so in that they may have they may have uh, some opportunity to improve. I'm not very sure. I will check it out. So course will have deep learning component uh, sometimes towards the end before you. Uh, we'll have to go through simple AI, uh, simple ANN concepts, uh, simple artificial neural network concepts. Yeah. So wherever this mathematical uh, uh, thing will be required to get some clarity, we will discuss in the class. And whatever is required for you to do homework, um, I will I will prescribe that. And Python also. Python also, I will discuss some and I will give some homework so that you also pick up something, right? Yeah. 
practical assignments will not be there as such they will not be evaluative but yeah of course there will be one practical assignment of course yeah and sorry I, there should be one uh, practical assignment as i mentioned right in the beginning of my lecture okay yeah so what for you have to wait naveen for buying the book so this uh, this is available as a soft copy if you want i can upload the link link for the soft copy so no need to purchase this book if you want you can take the paper version yeah any other queries so we will break for uh, 10 minutes after that i will come back and join yes so as long as um, it is up to me i am trying to make it simple basically uh, but I will also expect all of you to work hard for uh, understanding it. Actually, teaching is uh, two-way communication, okay? So the exercises of Python learning, I will uh, give you whenever there is uh, a requirement. Heroes, yeah? Yeah, fine. So I am uh, closing uh, this uh, first half of today's lecture. I will join you back after 10 minutes, okay?